Hello, everyone. Today, I want to show a method I developed to quickly and efficiently identify and remove duplicates. It works for duplicate values in any number of selected columns, and it works on any data source. But I will be using a SharePoint list as an example. All right, if you want to get the template and follow along, you'll need to find this find and remove duplicates page on the Power Automate community forum. The link will be in the video description. And once on this page, you can scroll down to the bottom of the main post and find this get distinct or remove duplicates solution package here. You'll click here to download that, save it to the computer. And once you have it saved, then you can go over to your Power Apps homepage, find solutions on the left hand side menu. And then once in the solutions menu, you can find import solution, browse, select the package that you just downloaded, then select next, select next again. And then here you'll need to either choose a previous SharePoint connection that you've made or create a new SharePoint connection for the actions in the flow. Once you have that set, then you can select import. Then once the package is done importing, the package name should appear in this list of solutions here, should likely be the first one in the list. So I'll just click in there. And the first thing to appear in the solution package list here is just a list of all the resources, including the two flows included in the package. Today, we just want to focus on this find and remove duplicates flow. So I'll click here to go in to edit this flow. And once inside the flow, we'll just want to fix some of these connections here. You may have to just create a new connection. And then we'll have to do the same down in this action. And that should now be all set. So overall, the flow takes in data from any connector or source. We're just using SharePoint for this example. And then no matter what the source is, it feeds the output JSON array from that source into this action. And this action also specifies the columns and values to check for duplicates, which sets things for all the following actions to take that JSON array and chosen columns and process it until it can output the same JSON array with an additional parameter or field that marks when any given JSON array record is a duplicate or not. And you see down at this last filter array action that we are using that new is duplicate field to filter down to only the records that have been marked as duplicates, which we can then use in the following apply to each loop here to delete each of those items. So going back to the top here, We'll start with this action to go through in more detail how this works. So if I go over to a pass flow run here, we can see what this actually looks like when it's working on real data. So we see here's the part where it's taking in the JSON array of data from our get data action. In our example, it's the SharePoint action. And then it's outputting this here where it has a json array uh, made up of records that each have first the original json record so all the data in the original json array record but then it's followed by whatever inputs we used for the selected columns and their values so the columns that will columns and values that will search for duplicates also note that we added in this make unique GUID piece. And we did that to ensure each original record is unique or has at least one completely unique field. Uh, and that's to make sure that a later piece that splits on each record works properly without splitting on two or more identical records at the same time. So after that, we have the following action, reformat record and duplicate checks. So first we see the order of our JSON array has been reversed. We reversed it because the next step that actually marks the duplicates starts marking from the start of the array 
and for any set of duplicates leaves the last record as the non-duplicate. So reversing the order here helps make the original order by ascending or descending more intuitive for what records will be kept in the end. Uh, and by that, I mean, when we set up our get data action, it's actually important to be able to sort by something in ascending or descending order to control which records will be kept as the non-duplicate and which ones will not be kept. You see here, since it's sorted by created ascending, that it's going to keep the oldest or smallest and delete the newest or largest uh, records. So it'll count the newest or largest records as the duplicates, and then the oldest one it'll keep as the original. So again, that reverse here is just to make that a little more intuitive when people are entering in um, the order by to control which duplicates are kept. But more importantly, this action basically keeps our original record JSON piece with the entire original JSON record, but then takes all the individual columns to check for duplicates and puts them into an object in a single duplicate fields JSON field. So if we go over here, we can see what that looks like on the second action here. So we have the original JSON record staying the same, but then for all those fields all that we want to check for duplicates, we've put them inside their own uh, parameter and their own JSON object here. And so that's the final step before our final reformatting uh, action that does most of the work here. The select reset to record with is duplicate field action. So ultimately, this action takes the two field JSON array of original records and objects of columns to check for duplicates and then reorganizes them back into something much more like the original JSON array from the get data action, but this time with a new is duplicate property that marks whether each record is a duplicate or not. So if we go over to this Word document, I'll be able to explain what this actually looks like as it's working over each piece of the data. So we can see here what the preceding action left us with and what is the input for this select action, which is a JSON array of the original record in the record JSON piece, and then the columns to check for duplicates in the duplicate fields JSON object. So it's just a JSON array made up of records with these two objects in them. And if we go down, we can see the expression that we're going to be talking about here, which is the expression in this action here that operates over every single item that is fed into it, every single record. And so we have this outer piece, you know, add property, which is adding a property to the original JSON record. Uh, and the property is called is duplicate. And then for the values of that is duplicate field, we have this expression here, which is the main piece that we need to talk about uh, being this part that gets the length or the number, a, a count of all the duplicates, um, of all the duplicate, duplicate fields, JSON objects after the current record in the whole JSON array. So, what I mean by that is, see, we have this first piece, this inner piece of the expression here, which is going to stringify the entire JSON array. So, you know, we have our records here, all with their two, um, two objects, re record JSON and duplicate fields JSON for each record. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to take this current record, the string of this current record, and it's going to split the overall string JSON array by the current record. So if you see down here, see it's taken that part that was highlighted as an example of the current record and split on it to create two items or a two part array here where the first string in the array will contain all the 
records that preceded the current item. And then all the records after the split uh, contain they're all the records that followed the current item or the current record. And so from there, we can then take that array with the previous and the following records and skip over the previous records. So basically, we're removing all the records that preceded the current item. And that leaves us with just the records that are following the current item. And it recombines it into a single string there. So once we have that string of all the records following the current item, then what we can do is we can kind of, in a way, search that those remaining records for any uh, duplicate fields JSON object that matches exactly matches the current items duplicate fields JSON object. And we'll split on that so that the array that we get based on that split contains the number of actual records um, left containing the same duplicates values in those fields. So if we see here, we split on that because this piece matched this duplicate fields JSON piece of the current item. So by splitting on that, we are left with an array of that has at least two items in it. And if there was another uh, duplicate fields JSON in another record following these, then it would also split on that and create another item or another split. And once we have that array with the number of items that represent the number of actual records following the current item that have the same values in those duplicate fields, then we can just take the length of that new array to get the number of duplicates following the current item. And so if this, if this didn't actually have any records following it uh, that contain the same duplicate fields JSON object, then it wouldn't split on anything and it would just return a single uh, string item in an array. So it would only have one item in that array. And that's where this piece makes more sense, where this is saying if the array that we have from the split only has one item in it, then that means there were no duplicates found, no duplicates after the current record found. So it'll return zero for is not a duplicate. Whereas if it did split on something and the uh, array resulting array from that now has more than one item, so it has two or more items, then it's going to mark down one as is a duplicate. And keep in mind, the select action is doing the same process in parallel for every single uh, record that we feed into it. And once it's done that and gotten this value, then again, it's going to return the original JSON record just with this new is duplicate field parameter added to it with the value from the expression that we just explained. So that's going to look like this, where we have all the original fields from the original JSON record, but we're going to have added on this is duplicate field. And it's going to do this for every single record that we had in our example list. So once we have something back like the original JSON array of records, along with the new is duplicate marker, then we can pass that on to the filter array action, which again, is just going to take any of the records that have a is duplicate of one, which means that they were marked as they are duplicates. And then once we have that array of only the duplicate records, then we pass that along to the apply to each. And the apply to each then can reference different fields within each record using this type of notation here, where we're referencing the current item. And then within the current item, we insert the column that we want to reference. So we see down here where we had to reference the ID column, 
then we just put in that items apply to each question mark square brackets and then in the single quotes id that way as this loop goes through each of those duplicate records it's going to insert the id number for each of those records into this delete item action and in fact de delete each of those items so now that we've reviewed all that i do want to actually set this up for a example run so i'll go here and input the site address here and the list name. And then I'll do the same down here for the delete action. And so now we're set to run this on our example list, which if I come over here, we can see what this looks like. You can see in this list that we have some exact duplicates where both the title and column two match, and then some near duplicates where say only the title column matches. So as the flow goes through these items, it's going to see that say this one is a duplicate of this one, and it will delete the uh, most recently entered one since we have the items coming in order ascending. Uh, and then it'll do the same for this item and for both of these items for string four. So let's go ahead and set this to run. We'll save. And then go to test, manual, test, continue, and run flow. And we see that that completed successfully. So now if we go back to our list, and we refresh the page. All those items that we said would be removed are in fact removed. And all the records that only had near duplicates are still there. So this did in fact find and remove any duplicates based on our multiple specified columns. So that is how to efficiently find and remove duplicates in any data source based on any specified columns. If you found this or any of my other content helpful, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.